Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having an amazing day today. Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys a bunch of different freezer meals for, I'm specifically doing it for when this baby comes, but obviously you can make freezer meals anytime and they are so helpful. This was one of the things that I did with my first son, Brayden, that was like most beneficial for me. After giving birth, having all the meals just to be able to take out and quickly make when you have a newborn baby is seriously so helpful. So this is one thing that I knew I wanted to do again this time around. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a few different dinner meals. I don't even know how many at this point. I wanna say there's like eight to ten. <laughs> I'm gonna be showing you guys. I do a film like over a few days period of time because for me Cooking all of it in one day is just not realistic when I already have a toddler at home and everything like that So what I like to do is make dinners that kind of go around it Like if I'm gonna freeze stuffed shells, then I'll just make stuffed shells for dinner that night and do like a big batch of them um, Or if I'm gonna do with something with ground beef Then I'll just make a bunch of ground beef and then do my freezer meals with it So you're gonna see different outfit changes and stuff like that and that is why that's just what's easiest for me and I'm hoping to do like another one with breakfast and lunch freezer meals in it, but I am currently 37 weeks in four days right now. So I don't know if I'm gonna get around to it. And honestly, the dinners is like the most important one for me because breakfast and lunch, we typically just do easy things at home anyways, but it would still be helpful to have a few freezer things in there. So I'm gonna try and get that for you guys. If you guys wanna see that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and if you guys enjoy this type of content, please press that subscribe button before you go. Um, and make sure your bell notifications turn on. That way you get notified every time I post. I post mommy and lifestyle videos for you guys three times a week. With all that being said, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into these freezer meals. Okay, so I'm gonna be starting off with some Italian recipes. So before I jump into those, I need to make some homemade sauce because ever since I've been pregnant, I literally just can't do jarred sauce. So I like to actually keep this on hand. It's really nice because you can freeze sauce and take it out anytime you want and it ends up being cheaper than buying the jarred anyways. I just start off by heating up some olive oil and then adding some chopped onions and minced garlic and cooking those until the onions are nice and translucent. And <laughs> after they're cooked, I'm going to go ahead and add some tomato sauce. This depends on how much you need. I did three of the larger cans and I honestly, I wish I did a little bit more. So that way I was able to freeze a little bit more than what I did. But whatever, we did three cans and I usually rinse some water through them and pour that in there as well so you get like all the sauce adds a little bit more you know and then i'm just gonna go ahead and add different seasonings in there i just do this by taste so i don't have any measurements for you guys but i do basil um oregano italian seasoning mix onion garlic some parmesan cheese um and then i'll cover this and just let it simmer for like an hour and you're good to go. You got your sauce. It's super quick, super easy. But we get up and start from the ground. And I, I really want to know, really want to know. If I... So while that is simmering, I'm going to start on my first freezer meal, which we are going to do with some stuffed shells. Stuffed shells is always one of my go-to freezer meals that honestly just freezes so well and like cooks so well after being frozen. So I'm cooking two box of jumbo shells. And then for my stuffed shell mixture, I am doing a large thing of ricotta that I got from Walmart. And then um, I think I did two or three of small ricottas that I got from Aldi because I shopped like different days. Um, I added a few eggs in there and some parsley and some shredded Parmesan Romano cheese and shredded mozzarella. I'm going to mix this all up and that is my stuffed shell mixture. Again, I feel like everything is like very simple and you can do obviously whatever your regular stuffed shell recipe is. You can just freeze that. Um, but I'm actually making this for dinner this night as well because like I told you guys that is just how I like to do my freezer meals It's so much easier for me that way So I go ahead and put some sauce in the pans and then I'm gonna stuff my shells And put some more sauce over top and then top it with some shredded cheese If you prefer you can do this after like not freeze it with the cheese
can see I got two freezer meals out of this and the night that I filmed this dinner as well. However, stuffed shells usually last us two nights anyways. We usually cook them one night and then we'll do leftovers the next night. So really I got like four dinners out of this, which is super nice. <laughs> And then to wrap them up for the freezer, I put plastic wrap over it and then aluminum foil. Um, just because I feel like it keeps it a little bit, you know, more, a little fresher in there. You probably don't have to do the plastic wrap part, but I do. And um, for the directions for this, I will defrost them the night before. And then I will put them in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes or so. And what I like to do when I'm writing the directions on things, I put it on top. I also like to write what it is on the side because that way when it's in the freezer, you can easily see what it is without having to like lift everything up, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I am going to be making some lasagna. This is the same night, that way I can use the sauce. So I'm just starting off by browning some ground beef with some garlic powder and some pepper. Once that is nice and cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my sauce mixture into the ground beef after I drain it and um, let that simmer for a few minutes. So when it comes to assembling my lasagna, I just put some of the sauce mixture on the bottom. And then for time's sake, <laughs> I'm using the oven ready lasagna noodles. I don't know if like regular noodles or this kind of noodles will, free but will freeze better, but just for my sanity, you know, I use these. And then I use the same mixture that I used for the stuffed shells. So I actually just went ahead and made some more of that. And I'll layer that on top of the lasagna noodles and then I'll layer some of the meat sauce on it and continue this until I run out and get to the top of the pan. Also, can I just say that when I freeze meals, I feel like I make them a lot simpler than when I <laughs> am making them like the night of. I usually add um, like ground sausage and stuff to my lasagna as well and um, some like diced tomatoes and things like that. But <laughs> for this freezer meal, I just kept it nice and simple. You're already making like so much <laughs> and you're already having to buy so many ingredients that I feel like I just like to cut back where I can, you know? I don't know, maybe the song So there is four freezer meals down and now I am just freezing the rest of my sauce as well. Like I said, I wish I made some more because I only got um, a little bit of sauce to freeze, but I do already have two bags in the freezer. So at least I have a little bit of a stockpile of sauce. <laughs> um, now we are on to a few nights later and we're gonna start by making some shepherd's pie. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prepare a 10 bag of potatoes. I'm going to make a shepherd's pie for the night of and to freeze. And then I'm also going to make some extra potatoes to freeze as well. Let's go. 
So I'm starting by browning my ground beef with some garlic powder and pepper. That's usually just my go-to for ground beef. I think I have five pounds here. I honestly don't remember at this point, <laughs> but uh, you know, just however, however much ground beef you think you need. And then once it's nice and cooked, I drain it and am adding it to my pans. Um, I'm doing two freezer meals of this once again. And then I'm gonna add two cans of corn to each pan as well. This is like a lazy shepherd's pie, you guys, and it is my favorite. I love it, just like simple like this. When I make it at home, I don't like too much stuff in it. I don't know. Um, so I'm adding my drain canned corn, and then for my potatoes, I make my potatoes different like every single time I make them. It honestly just depends on what I have in the fridge. Um, but this time around, I am just <laughs> mashing them up a little bit before I add the stuff in, and then I'm adding a stick of butter and a stick of cream cheese. And I believe you're going to see me use regular milk when usually I would use um, heavy cream or half and half or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I usually don't use regular milk. And then I'm adding some salt and some pepper and just mashing them all up. It's a beautiful world out there. It's a beautiful world out there. Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare. After I get my potatoes on my shepherd's pie, I am just chopping up some butter and adding that in there as well. Just so when you cook the potatoes in the oven after they're frozen, butter just like kind of helps it cook a little bit better than if you were just to put the potatoes in. Um, and I also add shredded cheese on top of my shepherd's pie, but again I'll do that like after I get to mix it a little bit in the oven. Um, just because the way potatoes freeze. I'd prefer to be able to mix them first, so I did insert a little clip here of our that night shepherd pie just so you guys could kind of see what it looks like when it is done with the cheese and everything like that. But there we have six freezer meals and with the leftover potatoes, I'm freezing them. I've never frozen potatoes like this, but I read online that this makes them defrost a little bit better, so I'm freezing them and like, I'm putting them on balls on parchment paper and then putting them in the fridge so that way they cool down and kind of harden together. And then I'm freezing them in a pan like this in balls. Um, and I rub that when you defrost it and add like more butter to it and stuff. It again, is just makes it easier to make them like nice and creamy. And if you wanted to at this point, you could like portion it out and kind of take out different balls <laughs> instead of having to cook all of it at once. I'm gonna make all my mistakes so now we are gonna make a thing of meatloaf i'm just gonna make one of these to go with the mashed potatoes that i made so i have two and a half pounds of ground beef here um and i'm gonna add I'm gonna add two eggs into it. 
Um, I'm really bad at this because I don't ever actually <laughs> like portion anything. So I'm gonna try and tell you guys. I'm gonna do some Italian breadcrumbs. Um, maybe like a half a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. Parmesan cheese. A little bit of Italian seasoning. Maybe like a, I don't know, a tablespoon, not too much because there is some in the Italian breadcrumb. Some parsley. And a little bit of water. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start mixing all of this. Sounds absolutely disgusting. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this into a loaf in my pan. Um, for a topping, we always do brown gravy, which I make with the drippings, like of the meatloaf. So I will just make that after the meatloaf is done cooking. But if you're someone that adds like, um, I don't know, like a, whatever people add ketchup on top or whatever, ketchup mixture. Um, I would probably wait to add it until after, like when you're actually cooking it and not before when you're freezing it. Okay, so there is that. I'm going to go ahead and put foil on this and this gets baked at 350 for, I don't know, probably like 45 minutes to an hour. Depends. This one's thinner than I normally, than I normally make them and I did that on purpose because I feel like it will defrost easier that way. I'm kind of, I don't know, just thinking like how I freeze my ground beef in general. I feel like this would freeze a little bit better if it's just a little bit thinner. So there we go. So these ones are super easy and super healthy. There's some chicken and veggie bakes. So I went ahead and washed some carrots and potatoes. I plan on making two nights worth of these. Um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up my carrots and my potatoes. I'm also, I'm gonna go ahead and spray my pan with some of this olive oil cooking spray. Throw my carrots in there. Which I'll probably add more carrots. Now I'm gonna start chopping up some yellow potatoes. You could really add like whatever veggies into this that you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle this with some olive oil. This one's gone, so keep dropping everything. What's new with my life? And then I'm gonna start by seasoning the veggies, which is, you know, whatever you like. Put whatever you like in there. I'm gonna do some garlic, an onion, some Italian seasoning, and some pepper. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So high, trust in our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down. Um, you're gonna bake these at 375 for one hour. Yeah, it seriously smells so good, and I don't even know why. <laughs> All the seasonings mixed in there just smelling so dang good. 
Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. Okay, so this is like pretty random. I, 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 I will keep on holding my head high. This is why you high. have like a super easy lunch, or if in general you just have like hot dogs that you don't want to leave in the fridge for too long. This is how I freeze my hot dogs. So I flash freeze them first. Um, so I take them out of the package and lie them on some parchment paper like this. And then I put them in the freezer for like an hour or two to flash freeze them. And then I'll go ahead and put them all in the bag. This makes it so that they don't stick together and you can take out one at a time, which is a life safe. Brayden likes hot dogs for lunch and stuff, but Floyd and I really only eat them if we're like cooking out and stuff like that. So this is just a great way to keep the hot dogs like good for him. Cause he obviously doesn't eat a whole pack before they go bad. And so this way after they're flash froze, you can go ahead and just put them all in the bag like you normally would. And they're not gonna stick together at this point. Um, and you can do this with like anything. Like if I, free if I freeze veggies or anything like that that we have left over, um, like celery, we never finish the whole thing of celery before it goes bad because I basically only cook with celery. So I'll flash freeze that first and then put it in a bag and do the same thing. And that way I can grow it out when I need it. Okay, so this next one, I did not realize how little <laughs> veggies I got, so I'm a little disappointed because so I'm not going to be able to make as many as I had planned to. Um, but we're going to do another chicken and veggie one, but what's really nice about this is you can make it like single serve, so you can have it for lunch, or you can make it as a full meal for dinner. Um, I'm just going to show you guys how I do it, and then that way next time I go grocery shopping I can grab some more to make some more of these. You could add onion into this, I usually do, I'm like slacking, I forgot a bunch of stuff. And I was going to add broccoli into it but then I just decided to add broccoli into um, that other dinner so now I don't have any broccoli to add into it. So we're just going to do zucchini and peppers and call it a day and it will be just fine. Unless I can find anything else in my fridge before I start assembling these. So now I'm also gonna chop up some chicken breast into bite-sized chunks. Make this bad boy taste a little better. We're gonna add some olive oil into there. Basically, we're gonna do all the same stuff we did for the last one. It's just a different concept of chicken and veggies. So garlic, onion, um, pepper, and some Italian seasoning. And this one will be cooked on stovetop. So like stir fry style, I guess. Um, I do think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this one all together and make it more of a dinner portion and then when I get to the store I'll make a few for lunch portions because Floyd's gonna be home the first two weeks anyways so really I could cook this up for lunch one day um, when he's home serve this over like rice or um, cauliflower rice or something like that and this meal I'm gonna go ahead and put into a freezer bag so that is everything I am cooking and freezing with you guys in today's video. Like I said, I'm hoping to be able to get up one more of these before baby comes, but when this video is posted, I'm 38 weeks pregnant and being induced in a week. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to find the time, but hoping to be able to find the time. If not, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up so I know you like these kind of videos because I can always make them in the future when the baby is here as well. Also, please don't forget to press that subscribe button before you go if you enjoyed this video. And make sure your bell notification is turned on because I have lots of good stuff coming up for you guys and you don't want to miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!